it's been a wild ride the last few years for those interested in UFOs and UAP. By the way, what's the difference between those terms? We'll talk about that in a second. But despite the government finally coming out and admitting that UAP demonstrate a potential threat that should be taken seriously, UFO researchers seem to be unhappy with anything that the Pentagon and NASA does or says. Meanwhile, the UFO crowd feels that a lot of the work that's been done to get us here in the first place is being dismissed and that the mainstream community has an overall dismissive attitude towards this issue still, and so that maybe this issue isn't being taken seriously. It feels like we've come to a place of stagnation, but ladies and gentlemen, we're going to change all of that. That's right, you too. In this episode, we're going to look at a cool potential UFO video from Enigma Labs. But first, we'll talk about how we got to this place of stagnation, who the players are and their current positions, and how we'll get things moving forward together. Hello and welcome to Open Minds UAP News. Like LL Cool J said, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. For those of you uh, who are new to UAP or Open Minds, I started my first podcast in UFOs in 2009. It was actually called the UFO Think Tank. Prior to that, I had been reading, researching, and doing some writing. Uh, I did join the Mutual UFO Network and eventually became their spokesperson in a field with a lot of strong opinions. You know, one of the things that I do is not burn bridges. I work with a lot of people. I've got lots of friends on all sides of the debate. However, there is some confusion related to my recent views and what I've been up to since I've been last podcasting. I got involved in the UAP topic as a journalism student. My eyes were open to the large amount of information on this topic not being covered by the mainstream media and that credible people took seriously. Unlike the common narrative, I found the military not to be unanimous in its view that there was nothing to be gained from researching UFOs. While I had no judgment on whether UFOs were truly something exotic or not, the more I looked into it, the more I found that very credible people claimed to have some very incredible experiences. If nothing else, there was definitely a story here. And that's what I decided to pursue. As a journalism student, UFOs became my beat. And surprisingly, they weren't really anybody else's beat when it came to uh, mainstream journalism. If nothing else, there is a story here being ignored just because it's weird. And further, I began calling the authorities on the cases that I researched, and I found this irrational tendency for them to pass the buck. Despite at times, these were cases in which recently discharged soldiers were reporting things that they were seeing that were unusual, but the FAA's only response was that they didn't research UFOs. In other words, if you said you spotted something in the vicinity of commercial airlines that could be a threat, they didn't want anything to do with it because you called it a UFO, despite these reports potentially being observed of objects uh, that could cause a safety issue. Today, things have changed. Just last week, Psychology Today posted an article making the same argument I just made, that it can be dangerous to ignore these reports. My goal in this field was to get this topic taken seriously by the mainstream, and that's what's happened. However, I thought once it happened that mainstream organizations would jump in to cover the news and the real science would begin. While I feel civilian researchers have done a lot, we really need more resources and talent to be able to understand what's going on with this phenomena. Things looked really good for a while, but things have now seemed to stagnate. And the root of the problem, as is common, seems to be misunderstandings. So let's get into the UFO versus UAP problem, which is at the root of this issue. The term was created by the U.S. Air Force uh, by Chief Colonel Edward U. Rupelt in 1955. He's the guy who ran Project Blue Book. At the time, the popular term for UFOs was flying saucers, but they thought that term was kind of lent itself to ridicule too easily. And also people thought of flying saucers as alien spacecraft. What Rupelt wanted to make clear was that the origins of the craft were unidentified. So he came up with the term unidentified flying object, UFOs. However, the media and the general public very quickly began to associate the term UFOs with alien spacecraft. 
I've had a long time interest in helping facilitate the scientific research of UFOs. However, the scientific community by and large have had an aversion to the term UFO as it invokes this idea of aliens. I've always felt that we needed to educate the public that UFOs are by definition unidentified. However, mainstream organizations wanted nothing to do with the term UFOs. They were okay with the term UAP. What's the difference between UAP and UFOs? Nothing. They're the same thing. UAP, as defined by Congress, means unidentified anomalous phenomena. Really, the terms are interchangeable. However, what has manifested is a clear delineation and some misunderstandings. So the study of UAP has become uh, the more serious scientific investigation of unidentified objects. The problem is that the general public and much of the media still don't understand a lot of these nuances. They don't seem to see the distinction between UFOs and UAP. So the baggage that came along with the term UFO followed to the term UAP, and many still think UAP means alien spacecraft. I mean, if you said you were, you know, looking at a, a show about UAP news, and one of your buddies says, well, what's a UAP? What would you say? A UFO. And so everything that they think of a UFO will come over to the term UAP. Another issue has been uh, an identity crisis, I think, within the UFO community. I thought my colleagues and I were all on the same page regarding UFOs. However, now I've found that many more researchers than I thought did consider UFOs to mean alien spacecraft, even though by definition, that's not what it was. I think it's just, you know, being in the lexicon for so long that that's what people thought. So now when it is okay to research and discuss UFOs, many are confused when NASA and the Pentagon say there's no evidence for aliens. To me, this makes perfect sense because that's been the state of this research all along. We have evidence of a phenomena, but we do not have significant evidence of the nature of the phenomena. NASA and the Pentagon are correct. We don't have scientific evidence um, or substantial evidence to be able to say UFOs are alien. So there's a sentiment that kind of the rug was pulled out from under people. They feel that the when the government said UFOs were real, that maybe they were saying aliens are here. But that's not the case. They believe the term UAP is distracting from the real issues and the focus of UFO research is being misplaced from finding out what aliens are up to to researching whether or not they're here at all, which some UFO people say, hey, we already figured that out. But that's not the case. Not everybody's on the same page. UAP, UFO research is a nuts and bolts thing. It's not about aliens. Um, maybe one day it will be. Of course, a, a lot of people feel that most likely, that's the most likely scenario is that, you know, aliens are responsible for UAP. Uh, but we don't know that for sure. And that's what we're trying to investigate um, and prove. Using the term UAP is not about deception. It's about accuracy and trying to help the public understand the status of the research into the UAP. We do not know any UAP or alien technology. But this misunderstanding is why NASA and the Pentagon repeat so often that there's no evidence for aliens. They often leave out that we can't rule them out, but we can't rule them in either. Amongst all of this confusion and misunderstanding comes a whistleblower claiming there are aliens and crashed alien spacecraft that have been recovered. Many in the UFO community got excited with this news, thinking they finally have proof of what they believe was the case. However, to many who are skeptical and many in the general public who are frustrated by these claims, they're not frustrated because the claims are made, but because the claims include no details or evidence. It's just hearsay and story. So to people who are skeptical, this looks like the same old business of mythology making that they believe UFO people have been doing since the beginning. And that made them skeptical of UFOs in the first place. So now we have a community inspired by these claims, even more expectant that revelation supporting their ideas will come to light. And then you have the skeptical side, uh, disappointed and disillusioned that the UFO crowd could be so naive as to accept these wild claims without any proof. And we have these hard sides that uh, just really are not coming together. The sad part is that there is no middle ground. 
and a lack of that middle ground seems to be stalling serious research. And that's what needs to stop. We need to dial down the emotion and we need to dial up the cooperation. And here's an exercise. Imagine being a NASA scientist or an intelligence officer um, and you're being tasked with looking into UFOs. As those of us in this topic know, uh, that's a lot to ask for. There's a big learning curve. Even the information I just reviewed here takes a quite a long time to be able to see all of this nuance. But the sentiment among the vast majority of UFO researchers has been to be very negative and combative and uncooperative. And that needs to change. And part of my efforts relaunching Open Minds will be to find like-minded individuals interested in gathering data to find out more about the nature of UAP. We need to do this in an open and cooperative manner with anyone who is looking for answers like we are, skeptics or otherwise. And no one should see this as a threat. If I'm sitting here saying that we don't have evidence for aliens um, and that we need to gather data to be able to uh, demonstrate what's going on, no matter what you think the phenomena is, this should be exciting for you because that, what that means is that all of us want to gather evidence. And if you've got the answer and your answer is right, that evidence will work to prove your answer is right. No one should feel threatened by this. This is all helpful. And these are all then people acting in the same direction. Is this all moot? Should uh, these whistleblower claims be proven? And then we understand the nature of things? Sure, but that's not the case. It likely is not going to be the case anytime soon. And even if it is, that's great and that's exciting. But still, we don't have to sit and wait. We can roll up our sleeves and we can get to work and we can make this happen on our own. And that's what we need to do. Instead of everybody fighting with each other, let's get something done. And we can get something done and we will get something done. But now let's take a look at some of these mainstream groups involved with UAP research. In particular, we'll look at the Pentagon, Congress, and NASA. And I'm going to give you some behind the scenes of what's going on here and why we have so much um, seemingly uh, battling and, and different perspectives and different views and things coming from all over the place. Uh, hopefully this will clear some of this up for you. But all of these groups now agree that UAP are a serious issue and deserve serious attention. And that alone should make those interested in this topic ecstatic. They also agree that there's no evidence for aliens. Now, recently, one house rep said that she believes UAP are, are aliens, but that's not a common sentiment amongst Congress people. Also, Congress people saying there is something legitimate to what the whistleblower David Grush has said does not mean that they're saying there's aliens. And there's a lot of people pushing that. Whenever Rubio says, hey, there's something to what Grush is saying, that doesn't mean Rubio saying aliens are here. What he's saying is that among a full set of claims, including claims that he's been retaliated against for his whistleblower claims, among other things, um, that they're finding some of that may be true. Maybe he is retaliated against, or maybe some of these UFO sightings that um, that uh, Chris has shared with them, some of which I'm sure we know and that I've reviewed here uh, on the website or on this podcast in the past, uh, are stuff we're aware of. So that is legitimate. Um, but that doesn't mean that they think that there are aliens. And I think they would say that straight up. And when we cover this, you know, we'll see there's other indicators that don't indicate some strong push towards uncovering some massive secret conspiracy. But starting with the Pentagon, they're looking into UAP via the All Domain Anomaly Research Office, which was established in July 2022. Its first chief, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, recently re resigned. He said he was only planning on being there for a year and stayed a little longer because he wanted to get out a historical report that's supposed to be coming out in the next week or two. So that's exciting. Um, but he said he was always planning to leave, but he also said he was a bit frustrated uh, about a lot of what I'm going to cover right now. And that also kind of uh, helped get him to move along a little more quickly. But now there's an interim chief in this position. This person supposedly was uh, the liaison between NASA and Aero. Um, and we'll see what happens going forward and if this person will stay or, or if they'll address the public. But 
Uh, arguably, the predecessor to Aero was a program called AWSAP, the Advanced Aerospace Weapons System Application Program. And this is kind of where contemporary UAP research starts. So this is the program that was covered in the December 2017 New York Times and political articles that kind of brought all this new attention to UAP. However, you're not going to find the term AWSAP in that New York Times story because the article was not completely accurate. And to be honest, it was kind of a cover-up of its own perpetrated by UFO researchers, um, which is another interesting dynamic that, mo that people have mentioned is that there are a lot of UFO researchers who are seeking disclosure, like my air quotes, sorry, I'll try not to do that too much, but they also are not sharing information that is not classified and could shed a lot of light on things. So we've just got the weirdest situation going on. But what I mean by a cover-up is that OSAP was really actually researching a lot of paranormal topics. Those of you who have been following my work know that I think I was the first one to cover, cover this. Um, just because I've known these people and I've worked with them for so long, I knew what they were researching, even though I didn't know it was a good part of a government program. But these topics included Bigfoot, cattle mutilation, portals, ghosts, all kinds of paranormal stuff. And that fact was left out because the authors of that New York Times article thought that that might undermine the credibility of their UFO researchers that they were talking about. A couple things with that. One is understandable because if they had included all that information in the New York Times article, then um, then it might not have gotten the attention that it did. Um, however, two, there's a bit of a problem with that because that information is pertinent information. And it's information that people should know when they're making their judgments um, on the veracity of any of this information. And this has become an issue and we'll get more into that as well. So questions have arisen whether OSAP was even supposed to be researching the paranormal at all. In fact, Kirkpatrick claims that the issue was investigated and that the scope of work done by OSAP um, was, didn't, wasn't supposed to include paranormal research, but it did. And how do we know that for certain besides my reporting um, and the people that I talked to? Uh, the DIA agent in charge of OSAP, James Lekaski, actually wrote a book where he outlines this all very clearly and some of the weird stuff that they came across, including, you know, giant wolves and, and lots of very strange things. And in the book, Lekaski says, you know, this group, all of these people who I do know, and I knew this to be true in the beginning with, they believe this all to be real. So in other words, and I've repeated this over because it is so shocking, but now we're finally seeing mainstream news start to cover it, is that this group was given millions of dollars to investigate future technology. They investigated the paranormal, debatably outside of the scope of the funds they were given, and they believe that everything that they discovered on the paranormal side of things was real. Ghosts are real. Bigfoot's real. All of this stuff, cattle mutilations. So it's a really wild story. Even so, people involved with OSAP were tasked with creating a new organization called the UAP Task Force under the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. Um, it also fit under Naval Intelligence. But as outlined in Lekatsky's book, this group already had some fringe beliefs. However, they were tasked with penning a historical document, a report on the state of UAP research in which they said the limited amount of high quality reporting on unidentified aerial phenomena hampers our ability to draw firm conclusions about the nature or intent of UAP. And I think that's a very fair statement. We don't have enough data. That's what we're hearing from the scientists. That's what we're hearing from the government. We need data. And it makes a lot of sense. For instance, Galileo, which is a project ran by Harvard. It was created by Harvard scientist Avi Loeb. Um, and one of the things that they've done is start to gather data. A lot of people in the UFO research community were like, we already have data. Why are you collecting new data? 
And their argument is that the technology we have right now is better than we used to have in the past and that our current sensors can gather more hard data. And hard data is just not a visual by a witness. Hard data is data and information gathered from sensors where you can take that data and information and analyze it and be able to make something out of the nature of whatever it is you're observing. And that's what has to happen next. And that's what we're all moving towards. So that's a really important point. It was later revealed that the chief scientist of this report was Dr. Travis Taylor, who is a co-host on the History Channel's The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch was one of the locations of alleged paranormal activity that OSEP had researched. Uh, UAP Task Force Chief Jay Stratton also has appeared on the show. Assuming it was because of all the credibility issues uh, of the OSAP group, the Pentagon created Arrow. And what I mean by credibility issues, of course, are the Skinwalker Ranch television show appearances, the Likatsky book, um, and them pushing their very fringe beliefs that the government's um, hiding all of this information. Um, these are all kind of stories I've heard before. Uh, the contractor for OSAP was a guy named Robert Bigelow, who's been on 60 Minutes, who says aliens are here and he knows it. The host asks, well, what do you say when people say, you know, where's the proof? He says, just, I know, and that's it. So UAP task force people were kind of pushed to the side. And it was quickly apparent that Arrow was not working very closely with their predecessors at the UAP task force. Those who worked with OSAP and the UAP task force began then using their connections to share their views on UAP and the paranormal with Congress people and others. Um, so it's no surprise that the UAP task force is where Rush worked. And when he says he uncovered information about secret programs, um, to be honest, I've interviewed individuals who worked with OSAP, a, a lot of them over the years. I've known them very well. And nothing Grush claimed was too new. Um, several OSAP associates have made similar claims over the years, but never has this OSAP group ever provided any evidence for any of their claims. Since his resignation, Kirkpatrick has been discussing with the media how he believes this group has influenced the opinions of Congress uh, who listens to and believes their unsubstantiated claims. It should be noted that Jeremy Corbell, who has apparently had access to UAP task force information and has been leaking it, has made a documentary about Skinwalker Ranch and has worked closely with this group for years. Arrow, however, does seem to have a lot of congressional support. Congress has also been all over the place on this topic, and there's much more going on here than many see. But what do you think could be motivating Congress members uh, when it comes to these issues? Boats, of course, they're political animals. It's Congress. No doubt some of what we're seeing going on in Congress is just good old-fashioned politics. If there's a topic the public is excited about, why not jump in and try to gather some favor? If you're the party that's not in the White House, then you can also use this against them um, in some fashion to also gain favor. That's politics. For the most part, we do have a concerted effort by a bipartisan group wanting to push for more research and less secrecy when it comes to UAP. Two of the leaders of this effort have been Christian Gillibrand and Marco Rubio. Chuck Schumer has also played an important role, and there's also been a particularly active group in the House, uh, mostly Republicans, that seem to be more interested in using the topic to battle uh, over secrecy. Uh, one of their contentions is that, you know, not everybody in Congress gets cleared for information, only certain people from certain committees, and they're frustrated that they're not cleared for the information, although it might be wise to keep the processes the way they are. So what Congress has been doing is through the National Defense uh, Authorization Act, the NDAA, they've been developing a roadmap for future UAP research. A version of this was very aggressive and it established an independent panel to review UAP records and make declassified 
education recommendations, but that was amended by Republicans just before it was able to pass, and they removed a lot of that verbiage that would have done that uh, and led to man- more transparency. The Schumer Amendment was the name of the set of more aggressive directives for UAP transparency. It was entered around the time that Grush made its allegations in the congressional hearing. And many believe that Schumer's amendment was written from the perspective that Grush's claims were real and that Schumer and Congress believe, you know, that all of those claims were real. However, others have said that the bill was intended to take all of these fringe claims at face value in order to genuinely create an investigation that could look into all of the possibilities in order to appease the public, even though no one expects to find anything. From that perspective, it seems like a prudent political move. So in other words, you know, um, we're going to take all this stuff that your guy's saying and And we're going to act as though it's real. And so we're going to do this thorough investigation that encompasses all of these things you all are claiming. That was the intent, to do a genuine uh, investigation, to put this to rest. And we've heard some of the Congress people speak to this and say exactly this, um, that finally we can put this behind us and move on with other research. Uh, Unfortunately, those investigations aren't going to play out because that amendment got Uh, watered down. Congress now seems to be largely over UAPs for the moment. Um, It appears they're fine with Arrow, and they're going to let Arrow do their work. As for Grush, Kirkpatrick says that he looked into it, and they could not find any evidence for the claims that Grush made, even though Grush allegedly has refused to go in to talk to Kirkpatrick. Um, And really, we don't have any indication at this point that there is any ongoing investigation regarding his claims. Uh, Some people believe there is, but we don't really see any information that way. Congress seems to be appeased uh, by what Dr. Kirkpatrick has told them thus far. Um, And I think that they're happy with, now that we've got Arrow set up, let's find out what they can do. Let's let them do their thing. uh, And we're good for now. Um, So we'll see what happens. But at NASA, finally, what they've done is they put together a panel in 2022, and the panel's job was to review the state of UAP research and to make suggestions to Aero uh, going forward, uh, and also suggestions to NASA on how they could aid Aero. Their conclusions were that UAP are a serious issue and that NASA should aid Aero in the scientific investigation of UAP. Very, very good news. However, they've yet to take action or make any plans to move forward. They also said their panel faced a huge amount of online abuse, which was very heartbreaking to hear. And it just shows why some people keep their name anonymous. Why put your name out there if you're just going to get attacked by all of these strangers online, um, like any of us who go online and talk about this topic know happens. And that's some of the difficulty. We need to create a safe space where we can all talk and be cordial to each other and work towards the same same goal. This brings us back full circle. All of this back and forth and battling has just slowed things down. If you were a NASA scientist uh, and you wanted to look into this topic, you're one of those members on the panels, how motivated would, would you be that as soon as your name gets out there, you're lambasted by all this negativity online? It's not very motivating. And in fact, if it's motivating for anything, it'll motivate you to crawl back in your hole and not interact with any of this at all. There doesn't seem to be any common ground, but I'm back because I want to change that. Each week, I plan to bring you the news and to share insights and information without bias and vitriol. I can bring you the news without having to bash these organizations with good people just trying to do their best. We'll talk to researchers and we'll talk to skeptics. We'll not be talking to the same people you've normally heard from, but instead we're going to open up this discussion to new people getting involved with this field who have great expertise who can help aid the future of this research. We will encourage cooperation and attempt to see things from every perspective, from civil servants to private citizens. In my experience, 
People are not motivated by deceit or misdirection. Very, very, very few people, and it's not the government people, um, do I find motivated by deceit or misdirection. Um, the people I know in the government, especially NASA, they're about science and discovery, and that's what they've de devoted their lives to. And that's the very essence of their makeup. Like us, many people are motivated by wonder and discovery. So help me create this safe space for all of us to work in together. I know we went over a lot, but I'll be answering user emails during the show. So do email me if you have any questions, gives me ideas for shows to review more information, um, to get into the nitty gritty on some of this stuff. Maybe you're debating or you don't agree with something I said, no problem. Email me, let me know, and I will be uh, sure to address that uh, either on the show or, or via email because, uh, you know, like I said, we need this open middle ground where we can all work together. And I'm excited that we can provide and create this space uh, because it's important because we all have to realize that we have much more in common than we don't have in common. And when we focus on that, I think that we're going to be able to do amazing things. But now it is time for our Enigma UAP sighting of the week. All right. It is now time for the Enigma Labs UAP sighting of the week. So going forward, I'll use the term UAP mostly just so you know. But I have um, been working for this really cool company. So we partnered with Enigma Labs to bring you interesting UAP sightings weekly that they collect via their app and their website. If you have a report to submit, you can download their app at the Apple Store. Just go look for Enigma or submit it th via the website at enigmalabs.io. I-O, just so you know, it's a very popular term for tech companies these days. In the interest of uh, full disclosure, I am a paid consultant for Enigma, and that is how I can keep up to date on the best videos that come in. And I'm excited to share them with you here on the show. I look at a lot of sightings. And of course, as you all know, the vast, vast majority of sightings are boring, stupid stuff um, <laughs> that gets misidentified as something strange. But sometimes there are some really weird videos. And at Enigma, we're now getting so many sighting reports that we're starting to come across more and more of the good stuff. So I want to share with you all the good stuff. Now, these have not been investigated. I've only given them a cursory look. I do have years and years of experience of looking at UFO videos. Um, but, you know, really to call something potentially anomalous. It needs a lot of research, a lot of science that has to be done. So this is just early cursory stuff, but maybe some of you will catch, you know, one of these will catch your interest and you'll go do that further research and prove what's going on, which would be super, super cool. Now, the first thing that I want to do is show you how cool the Enigma app is. Um, because as with everything in this field, there are always conspiracies. And there are conspiracies that somehow we're some kind of nefarious group at uh, Enigma, which can be nothing further from the truth. We are just a bunch of really cool dudes trying to do some cool stuff. And when I do say dudes, I do not mean uh, just males. In fact, we have a lot of great women that work at uh, Enigma as well. We just have a lot of cool people. It's just tech people, dudes. Um, this is just a bunch of group of tech people who came forward now that this topic is popular to create an app to collect uh, sightings because we need to gather data. Like I said before, the way science works is you gather data, you analyze that data, you get papers written, scientists hash it out and fight amongst each other. And if it's really significant, they fight for quite a while before they determine, whoa, this is something that is legit. So that's the process we need to get into. So we need to gather that data. And that's what we're doing with Enigma is we're gathering sighting data. Um, it's that simple. Nothing mysterious or nefarious. In fact, I always tell people, they're like, oh, how do I know that you know, you're not hiding information? Submit a sighting. 
and you'll see that citing pop up in the app or on the website exactly like you submitted it to us unless we have to retract any personal information or or something like that um, there was a rumor recently that you know we had modified someone else's uh citing we don't have time for that um, we've just got time to get them out and chug them along. We're not that big of a group. Certainly nothing was modified. If we found anybody modifying something, they'd be gone. But we're a pretty close-knit group, so we wouldn't have anybody that would do that. Um, anyway, I mean, that's the type of thing no one would want to do at the company because uh, we've got a lot of great people just trying to do the right thing. So nothing nefarious going on with this company, just good people trying to do their best to come up with a cool tool. And this tool does get cooler by the day. So here's a website. I just want to show it to you real quick because I want to show you what the app looks like. We're going to look at one of these sightings here. Uh, and that's what you see on the front page here is one of those, uh, the, a sighting here uh, with the app. And I'll go through because the front page, we do have a lot of kind of screenshots to show you what we're up to. We're gathering sightings data. We're creating a mobile community of people to get online and talk about the sightings so we can all figure it out. And we're also introducing novel technology. And I'll talk to you about some of that. So some of our features, we have a very easy way to fill out your form online to submit that. If you don't want to write out a description, you can actually verbally do it too. Just uh, click play or click record and tell us verbally what happened. But do give us a description. Even if you give us a video, give as much description as possible. Um, on the app, you'll also be able to see a map here with all of the sightings there. Um, so you'll be able to see tons of historical data, um, just like other uh, sighting tools. We've got New Fork data, we have MUFON data, and then we have a lot of our own data. So all the new stuff, which are the little white icons there, that's new um, sighting reports that we're getting. I think we're getting sighting reports right now at, at a clip that nobody's ever gotten before. So we're getting a lot of them. But uh, you'll also get notifications. Um, and let's see, the other thing I want to show, I don't know that I really have screenshots for it, but I'll show you in the app. Just a couple quick things I want to show you. So a lot of what we're going to be looking at are mostly sightings that you'll see in the content feed. So a lot of these content feed ones are ones that I'll find. And, you know, these are not investigated. These aren't meant to say, look, all of these are unidentified. No, not at all. These are just some interesting stuff people are reporting. Some of these I feel like I can identify, some of them not, including the one that we'll talk about today. Um, but you'll see that in the content feed, this first tab. Lots of really cool videos. I don't want to show you too many just in case we look on the show. And I don't want to, I want you to go look on the app. App is completely free. Um, the second button is that map that we talked about. You'll see it zoom in there to your area. Here it zooms into me. We also have uh, reports from um, very popular sightings. So here's, if you click on this one, you can see the Nimitz sighting and get information about it. Um, let's hit the next one. We also have our own uh, camera in here that you could use. The cool thing about our camera is it's going to show you your elevation, it'll show you where you are. It shows you that the the tilt of your phone camera. And right down here, it's got a compass. So it shows us which direction you're pointing. If you record your sighting here and submit it, you know, this is all the telemetry that we can grab to find out more about the sighting. This is really cool though. This is an IR lens and it's under development. We're building it very soon. It's gonna have a new interface that looks a lot cooler. But you can use this, point it at the sky, just like you might be able to see here. And it's going to show you all the satellites that are in the sky at the time. Um, the other thing that we're working on doing with this is to also include aircraft. So right now you see all those satellites. It's loading them all up, and that's why you see all those numbers. But we're going to have it load aircraft where you can see then any aircraft, satellites, or even any like planets or comets or stars in, in the sky. So you can have this one tool to point at the sky and it'll tell you what you're looking at if it's something that's known or mundane. Of course, you could submit your sighting. And then the last button is just kind of your profile and uh, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, really cool. Um, it's a lot of fun. I quite enjoy working for this company. And I hope you all get the app. I mean, for free, what can you lose? 
Here's the signing, though, that I want to talk to you about. It's really cool. I'll play it here, but I've got it big screen, too. Um, we just got this one. This signing occurred on February 20th, 2024 at 1 p.m. Pacific, it says. Um, so that would be noon. This does not look like noon. So the person must have put in the wrong time. Um, but this is in Phoenix, Arizona. They call it changing. The only thing, description they put was showing off, which is unfortunate because we would like a lot more information. So in other words, they think this object showing off, but let's look at it. So it looks like they're looking at a star and then look at this thing. This super fast thing comes zipping into the screen and they track it. It's so fast. It's got a little bit of a tail. I guess it could be space junk maybe or something re-entering the atmosphere. But holy cow, that is pretty incredible. I have never seen a video like this. And I look at UFO videos. There are probably not too many people in the world who have seen as many UFO videos as I have, um, having done this for 20 years. Remember, I started with MUFON, which is another uh, sighting report group, and we would write about sightings every day. The other thing I didn't mention is I might be the only person who's had two full-time jobs working in UFOs. And this isn't just flash in the pan type of stuff. These jobs have amounted to over 10 years worth of work full time working on UAP. So I've seen a lot and I haven't seen something like this. That would be my guess, maybe space junk or something. But let's take a look at full screen here. Here we go. What the heck? I'm going to mute. Because uh, the noises that he's making are quite frankly kind of creepy. <laughs> but um, usually people cuss. I mean, all day we hear, holy F, what the S is that? But um, we hear a lot of cussing when people see something extraordinary. But this person's just kind of probably very concentrating because you can just hear kind of moaning. That's what you'd probably hear from me because I'm like concentrating so hard on getting the video. But yeah, this is a great one. So if you think you know what this is, let me know. You will find this on the app. So like I had reviewed before, this uh, was one that was on the 9th uh, in Phoenix, Arizona on the 20th of February. You can find this one in the app right now. Uh, the app, of course, is iOS. We're getting Android soon. What you're seeing here is the website because we also post the signings on the website for people to view. So that's where I'm watching it now. But uh, yeah, loco, crazy. And let me give you the Enigma number. And this is something new. A couple other things that I didn't mention. So all of the Enigmas that we have have Enigma numbers. So that's how you know, you know what your case is. And um, up in the URL, actually, is where you'll find, be able to look for the sighting. So for example, this is sighting 28 eight nine nine two i'll put a link in the description um but you can look at any of these sightings real quickly by just doing enigma labs.io slash sighting slash enigma number and uh pop that in there and uh be able to watch it so if you want to watch any of yours um or if you hear an enigma number as time goes on because you're going to hear a lot of, more about enigma numbers i'm sure as uh we kind of are becoming a main focal point for for reporting yeah weird sighting huh it's a crazy one i don't know much else to say about it except for wtf dude all right maybe we'll watch it right here as uh we end the show but anyway, thank you all so much for joining me this week. Right now, we're going to do bi-weekly. So in two weeks, I'll be back with an interview. Um, keep an eye on the social medias to find out who the interview will be with. I'm very excited about um, being able to talk, talk to people again. And I think you're going to be very excited about the people I bring to talk to. We'll have newsmakers. We'll definitely be making some news and uh, taking everything forward. So I'm really excited to be on this new adventure. I hope you're excited to join me. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll talk to you all in a couple of weeks.